You're listening to The Oven Podcast. Your table is ready. You can follow me. We're here tonight with New York City-based social media personality, comedian, and what sounds to me like the best job around, food critic. I've heard some people call him the food authority of New York. I've heard him call a bunch of people a neck bone. It's my pleasure to introduce our boy, who really needs no introduction, Little Mo Mozzarella. How you doing? All right, we got Little Mo here. We're at Mio Posto in Merrick, Long Island. We're about to have an awesome Italian meal. We got the wine. We got the martinis. Franco's got his vanilla coke. Yes, sir. How you doing? <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We're over here. We're with the oven. We ain't playing around. They let me order so you know we're going to eat good because these kids are ordering like children. This guy got chicken fingers <laughs> and french fries. I ordered everything, bro. You know me. I take everything that ain't bolted down. He's making fun of me for the cheese ravioli. This right? guy's got cheese ravioli. He's a child. He's got the vodka sauce. He's like, I'll on. pass on the lamb chops. Let me get a ravioli. <laughs> well, I have heard some people call him, you know, the food authority of New York. I'm one of them. So, you know, for, for you to have, you know, for us to have you here, man, this is, uh, this, this is going to be fun. This is going to be good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we're over here. Me and Bosa, I've been here plenty of times. I consider you and his friends. The place is delicious. They don't play around. Top-notch food. If you're in Merrick, Long Island, you're close in the area, make sure you stop by and try the food. It's delicious. How you doing? How you doing? All right, man. So, you know, first of all, I want to take you. I want to, I want to thank you for, you know, taking the trip out. Here's hello, tell him. What do you got over there? I got the vanilla coke, man. He's like a kid. He's getting vanilla <laughs> coke and ravioli. I'm How never, old are you, bro? I am never going to live it down. I'm glad somebody <laughs> fucking said it. How old are you? Whole I'm 31. You're 31? Yeah, You're yeah, like yeah. a child. Bro, I'm never going to live this down. Now we have him saying it on camera. No, he's an embarrassment. Well, you've been saying that to him for years, well, right? No, no, I've been telling him he don't know how to eat. It's all, Dude, ah, my it, God. It's all my boys that like. You're still drinking vanilla Cokes, but now out of 22 of us, 16 of them are on it. I'm interested, man, because, you know, it was kind of like overnight for you a little bit, right? No, no, not really. It looks like that. Um, what are you talking about? For, yeah, like yeah. So social I, media? Yeah, how did it all start? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker. A lot of people like you, you know, are really confused. They just think like, you know, it's I, no I, don't mean, I don't mean to you. I didn't mean overnight. Like, you just did it and then overnight it happened. No, it was what happened, like, I'm going to tell you what it is. I've always been the way I am charismatic, I was like, I'm about having a good vibe and having a good time. And um, I never had social media at all. And during the pandemic, I needed like an outlet for sanity like everybody else. Yep. And uh, I mean, there's a little to the story. I told the story a hundred times. It, basically what happened was one of my friends, my very close friends of French Montana, he called me to do a skit for him on like March 20 something. It was like the day of the pandemic. Huh? Yeah. Huh? So I went there, and when I went to do the skit, and I was in the studio, there's like producers and all kind of people there. Um, there were people coming in with masks on. Okay. And I'm like, what's going on with the mask? And they're like, you don't know about COVID? And I'm like, dude, I don't know what COVID is, you know? Anyway, long story short, that night, people kept asking me for my social media handle. Like, okay. what's your IG or whatever? I'm like, I don't have that. I don't have social media. I always call everybody Mo. It was a thing my father used to do. Like, yo, Mo, yo, Mo, yo, Mo. Yeah, yo, Mo. So people call me Mo because I call them Mo. <laughs> so then they says, make an account. So I made, the, they're like, it's easy. So I just like went on Instagram and I put the name Little Mo and there's an entertainer singing the name Little Mo. So it was taken. Yeah. And somebody was like, ah, oh, you got to sound more Italian. Try fettuccine, try linguine. And then mozzarella was available. Mozzarella. <laughs> so I made Little Mo mozzarella. I actually don't love mozzarella like that. I like cooked mozzarella, but like cold mozzarella, I'm not like a guy who's going to sit there and eat cold mozzarella with tomatoes. I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just sitting home and now I got Instagram and I'm just scrolling through it. And I came across Barstool and I seen Portnoy doing the pizza reviews. And this is not against Portnoy because I respect the guy. I, I, he's the man. I, as an Italian American from New York, when you see him, your first instinct is like, fuck this guy. He don't know fucking pizza. Because he's an <laughs> anti-Yankee guy. He's... You know, I thought he was Irish, he's Jewish. He's like, you saw feeling like he's not an authority on pizza. Like, this yep. is what you think, right? I'm a civilian, I'm a working guy, and I'm watching social media, and I don't know anything about social media. I don't know that, you know, he what he done. I don't know his history. I'm just like, fuck this guy. <laughs> so I started making, like, videos where I would, like, tag them and shit. And um, I kind of, like, just, like, doing, like, I was doing, like, COVID day one, COVID day two, COVID day three. And I'm going out, going shopping, and I'm making little videos, and I'm getting like a buzz in the neighborhood. And um, basically what happened was I was like, oh, I want to go to these spots because I thought they were going to close. Yep. So I made like a list of like the Fontys and like 
you know, the Fara pizza and, uh, you know, I mean, I was so, like no so name cool, and like some salamaries, some bakeries, delis. So my thing at first was like bakeries, delis and stuff like that. Small businesses. And I was like, let me go to them. Yeah. 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 yeah small businesses. So um, whatever the case may be, I started doing them and then I got some traction and I started like, you know, I started getting some following. Then Barstool like DM'd me and was like, yo, we're going to post one of your posts. And I went from like probably 3,000 followers to like 14, 17,000 followers like overnight. So when that happened, <laughs> Barstool had wrote in the um, caption, this guy's going to review all New York locations. So people started messaging me, I guess, thinking I work for Boston. Yeah, so yeah. I just like, hey, when are you coming by? When are you coming by? So really, at first, it was just like, really just sports, small business, and to eat for free. That's it. But there was course involved because I didn't know how to edit. Right. I didn't know how to do any of that crap. So yeah. we were like, people were like, oh, look at the sponge. He's eating for free. But I'm like, dude, it's costing me <laughs> 200 a pop because I'm paying for his shit. Then I wanted the videos to do well, so I'm like paying people, hey, can you share this on your story? This cost me like three, four hundred a video at the time yeah. to try to end up paying for booze. I didn't know what I was doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that think like, you know, that, I say this, and I just had a conversation with some guy on, on, online today. During the pandemic, when a lot of people were hiding, mm -hmm. I went up to, I did 200 locations of my own money. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. So you were not hiding. So. But at the same time, what I'm trying to say is they didn't do that. So now you see a lot of people who are doing what I do. You can't create the atmosphere I did. Right. No way. You can't create a pandemic again. You can't go out and support 200 business like I did. You could go in front of a deli and do a spiel similar to mine. Mm -hmm. You're not going to replicate the same thing. No. Right? It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? So I had to control like an environment that helped me. And I sprouted a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are more successful than me that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for me. You know, same reason way I took off Boston, these guys exactly. took off me. Yeah, you know, a course, dozen Italian creators right now say, now nah, you're doing it in front of restaurants. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you like something really funny. I think it's funny. And I bring this up all the time. If you were in Carbone, let's say, right, and you're eating with your family, and Robert De Niro's at the table next to you eating with his family, right? And you may say, oh, I'm a Robert De Niro fan. I want to take a picture with that guy, right? Mm -hmm. It would be a discussion before you went over. He's, by, he's with his family. I don't want to bother him. Right. There'd be some class. Yeah, yeah. But when you're a social media guy, there's no respect. It's like, bro, this guy's on TikTok. Fuck that. <laughs> you run over there and put you in a headlock. You know, because you don't get that respect of yeah, being yeah, earned. Right, right. At the same time, a lot of social media people think they're bigger stars than they are. I meet people from social media all the time. Like, you don't know me. I'm the guy who talks like a baby. I'm the one who wears a rig on my head and does this. Like, you know what I mean? It's very interesting. Wait. Fame does to somebody's brain. Which salad is this? Salad. Yeah, he told me I gotta try salad. Kush said to me, cause you gotta try salad. Thank you. Walnuts, cranberries. Cranberries? What are we on diets over here, Mo? <laughs> Brought you on, a, brought you on eat, to eat healthy over here today. I think I, think I saw a rabbit outside. We can give it to them. Um, Tell me, am I not supposed to use this one? No, bro, that's for the clients. Oh, this guy fucked the first time you ate, bro. Oh, this is everywhere we go, <laughs> man. All right, so what, what do we got over here? Uh, the fried calamari or it's fried calamari sauté. Lamb chops with teriyaki sauce. No, that's a wine sauce. That's not teriyaki. Something you say that it's teriyaki sauce, right? Skirt steak. The skirt steak? Steak with the teriyaki. Wow. I'm so happy we're eating good. Oh, no, we're I really tried those epics for like a month and a half. How'd that work out? I lost 20 pounds, but the problem is, is that it makes you miserable. Because you don't get to really enjoy food. I like to eat good. Everything I do is mood driven. If I'm in a bad mood, it's gonna fuck the videos. You're, 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 you're a stress eater too? I don't know what that means, but <laughs> when you're stressed out, you eat? No. 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 We're gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. No, it's funny. I'm like a foodie that never wanted to be a foodie. Uh, I'm not like a real foodie. Like, really? I'm not gonna go eat a fucking a lizard or a fucking no, grasshopper. My friend Marco from Marco's World, he'll eat anything. But, like, I didn't wanna be. So my thing is like, I'm basically like an improv guy. Okay. So mine is more about the comedy. I, the atmosphere of food just happened to be what, you know, is marketable and what took off. Right. But if you notice, I'll do it, a body shop, I'll do, a, I'll I'll do, do anything. A jeweler. It don't matter where I go. I'm just, it's more about just like interacting with the people and shooting from the hip and reading the room and trying to be funny, you know, and. Trying to really just, mine is more about the employees. 
Okay. I really get off on the employees. Like that's really what helped me during the pandemic because a lot of people were down and I brought like a different energy because a lot of times I get hired or brought to a place because the employees like me. Like the employee, maybe it's a major D and he'll be the owner like, yo, can we get Mo here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the owners are removed from social media. If you got a really successful restaurant, a lot of them don't realize they need social media because in their head, they, they can only serve as many people as they can fit. Right. So, what's this? This, we got the uh, meal, piece, meal Postal meatballs on this side. Wow. And we got the, what, Harry, what's this over here? Is it clams? Uh, a little regatta. Those are the baked clams organado. Baked clams regatta. That's what I thought. Wow, this is nice. This all. I'm glad we're eating here, man. Oh, yeah. Frank, are you what you need? Neoposa, how you doing? How you doing? This guy eats like a kid. No, he's... <laughs> you're lucky. Wow. You know what I mean? Are you hungry over there? Yep. No, we're going to pass this on over oh, there. Oh, wow. Too. You like, the, the, you like, you like the round ones or the squiggly ones? Nah. Well, I like the one with the tentacles. You like the tentacles? Yeah, you're a kid. Oh, so right, you, you only do the round ones. What did I tell you? We need a bigger boat on this table. Bro, lamb chops are sick. Amazing. I don't even, that's a wine sauce? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's a wine sick. sauce. Mega. Also, too, I don't know if I said it already, but I'm a big martini guy. I said extra dirty. Blue cheese olives. Bartender killed it. Wow. You're not lying about those lamb chops. Bro. These lamb chops are a joke, right? Yeah. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> we ate a... Before the pandemic and all that stuff. Um, I know you started writing. You were a graffiti artist too, right? Yeah. I used to write graffiti when I was a kid. Which is, like, so I love, you know, art like that and whatnot. Yeah. And I saw you were on, uh, was I it? wasn't, the, like, big. I got arrested five times for graffiti before I was 15. I sucked at it. You, and so you were getting No, I was, like, a good artist, but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is I always got arrested for it. Oh, so that makes you a bad Yeah, I was a big graffiti artist, yeah. So if you get arrested, you're a bad graffiti artist. Like you get caught. Five times? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, part, of, it's part of the... Uh... I, I mean, I was a little kid, but I used to get arrested for a little time. <laughs> well, you were on... They, they featured you on Five Points, right? Yeah. So I actually... I had, I had to look that up. And, dude, that is, like, such a sick... And they tore that down? I used to paint there every weekend. And they, and they, tore, they tore the Five yeah, Points Yeah, me as a friend of mine. My boy Penz is, like, he's a sick artist. He used to... We used to paint together. I'm I'm very friendly with a lot of the biggest guys in, in graffiti. Like they follow me and support yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool, man. So that's yeah, it. I was really into that as a kid growing up. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Like you know, I I know you. So you dropped out of school, right? Yes. And went right into your dad's HVAC company. Yep. At so, fifteen. And then what? Seventeen. You owned your own your own business, right? Yeah. Is it still the same business that you're running with today? No. Or? When um when my father passed away. He wanted me to, to go back to school for engineering. Nice. So in my 30s, I went back to school for mechanical engineering. That landed me a job with a high-rise uh, structure manager slash developer. I built a, a whole department there, probably like 15 guys. Um, and that's what I did. All this food has been unbelievable so far. So, favorite Italian food? If you're going to a family party, what's the, what's the, the biggest, the best plate you're looking forward to? Oh, I don't know, man. I part. I like simple dishes. Okay. I like pasta with peas or pasta, you know, linguine with garlic and oil. Um, we got that coming out. We got with claims. But I like simple stuff. I grew up, like, my family, the way they cook Italian food is, like, simple, more simple. You know, they come from, like, a simple town. I'm a big sandwich guy. Big sandwich guy? I like, I like, I like heroes. Like a deli, like deli sandwich. Yeah, that's my thing. I, I think a lot of a lot of places um, OD now. The style is to make this big thick sandwich. Yep. I don't really like big thick sandwiches like that. Yep. A couple of slices. Uh, I'm, good. I'm good. Some good cold cuts, you know. Um, I, I'm big with that. I love um, being a pork store. I love uh, Anthony's Sons Panini Shop in Williamsburg. I like uh, Leone's. I've been to Leone's. Yeah, Dyke yeah. Heights. Uh, the Fontes is one of my favorites. I'll put that over there. Potato and eggs. I, 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 potato, I'm a, potato and egg, huh? Potato and egg. Yeah, yeah, potato I'm a potato egg. and egg it's guy. Like my, it's like my dad, man. Yeah, I like simple stuff. You got to understand, I grew up in a, working in a, in a van. 
You yes, know, I was an HVAC contract, so I was mm -hmm. in a band my whole life. Me and my father went from stop to stop. So we ate on the go. Yep. You eat, you throw the garbage on the floor in the fucking truck. At the end of the day, you go clean it out. That's how I grew up. You know, I'm a, I was a service guy. A lot of people don't realize that. You know, they're like, oh, he's not a blue collar guy. Like, I worked wrenches my yep. whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, 20, I, I didn't, I had 20 years under my belt before I, be, you know, worked in design and engineering. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was you, put, you, you put your time in. I was a team fitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I worked, yeah, I, I, over 20 years. I'm in surveying and engineering, so we, what are you? I'm in surveying and engineering, so we do, do the same so kind of thing. you spray paint your feet? Spray, all, all day. <laughs> spray paint all over my boots. I've done that before. But. Well, people, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to give you a real advice, because I did that. I, um, I went full time with this over a year and a half, and I didn't have to go back to work. Plus... Financially, it wasn't a finance issue. It was a creating content issue. Mm. If you don't go to work and you don't have that hope to get out of there for something you really want to do. You get comfortable you, a little bit? You get too comfortable. I needed to go out and be among the city. Like my, I just went back to, to work in the city, to a buddy of mine's company. And now that like I'm out in the city again, like my following is starting to grow again. Like big numbers. like. 24, 25% jumps monthly. Really, wow. just from? And I was at, for the last year, my numbers did not move. Because you wake up on a couch, you dig on your head, and you're going to go out and create content. But you start getting lazy. You start just doing little content from your house. And the truth is the atmosphere affects the video. But now you typically do infused food. Yeah, so how would you do it here? How do you put it? Oh, I mean, so he's got a business, uh, NY Pop Butter, NYPB. Um, and dude, like I said, I'm a lightweight. You know, Busy Bees? Yeah, I know Busy Bees. Yeah, it's my guy. I did a video with him. At Busy Bees? In town? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a whole bunch of oil he gave me and shit, you know? Oh, it's, dude, they, they, have, some, they have some good He's stuff over there. Um, like him, we did a promotion, but it was different. You know, his thing's a little bit different. It's organic, you know, a lot of cancer patients go there. Well, that's, you yeah, know, that's what it is. I'm all for really. that. I don't think there's nothing wrong with smoking weed at all. I'm not like a guy who's against smoking weed, mm -hmm. but I understand that when you're working with brands and stuff, you yeah, got to pick your, you got to pick and choose what you're backing, right? And you got to know your audience, right? Uh, me, um, I have a lot of children follow me, a lot. Like I have, I can't tell how many eight-year-old kids come up to me and throw my punchlines at me. Dude, how awesome is that though? It's awesome. Did you ever see a video <laughs> I have with all the little kids doing it? Yeah, oh, it's amazing. And that was great. But that changed the way like I started doing things. Like if you'll notice, I'm not a big cursor. People I'll say you says this, but I'm not there's a lot of guys that I've been saying this since I was eight. No, yeah, no, it's, I didn't invent it. But I'll tell you is you'll see people that are a lot more vulgar than me. Mm -hmm. And vulgar works, right? Vulgar works for social media. Yeah. If I go on uh, right now on TikTok, you motherfucker, I crack your dad with a submarine motherfucker. People love it. It'll, they'll eat it up. But I do take into account that I have a lot of kids following me. I and I have three children. So, like, I, I look for the long run. I want to be like, um, I don't know what plans I have. I, I think I'm going to do something big. I think that I'm going to do something a lot bigger than I even think I'm going to do. I think, because I kind of believe I'm getting carried by a wave. I don't. I didn't necessarily set out to do exactly what I'm doing, but it, it's kind of working for me. It's not kind of working, bro. It's definitely it's working. working. I can see you in Hollywood. Man. Yeah, I think I think that I put out a certain kind of like aura. I'm I've sure. always been into that shit, mm -hmm. and I really believe like if your intentions are good and you're going to help people, I think that you'll get carried by a wave. I don't think I yeah. think if it comes out of your hand. I agree, man. And you started doing it the right like the right way during the pandemic. The Ooh. right, but who said it was my choice? Maybe some higher yeah, yeah. put me in that position. Think about how many places you helped, though. Like, seriously. Right, I, 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 like, right. And you know what's so funny? I, I was thinking about this today. I was in a position where it was very hard to knock what I was doing. So we're in a pandemic. There's places don't know if they're staying open. I'm trying to promote them. I get picked up by Fox 5, yep. Channel 11, Access Hollywood. I do all these things. And... At that time, if somebody would say, this fucking clown, this idiot, he's eating for free, they would get jumped. 
<laughs> you know, now people forget. People forget very easy. Mm -hmm. And now people are like, ah, he's charging an arrest, somebody's this and that. What happened to me was, after the pandemic, um, me and my family sat down and we were like, what are we going to do? Because you got to go back to work. So this got to stop. And I would just tell people, hey, I can't come no more. And people would say to me, how can we make it worth your while? And then I would take very little amount because I says, hey, what are you doing? That's my buddy. Come on in, bro. Come on, come on, sit down. The show, come on, the show, sit down. You're listening to The Oven Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. How you doing? Welcome back. I just want to let you guys know I brought my civilian friend over here, little Mo Matzo Ball. Let him know how you doing. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to be my manager, but I'm thinking about making him like, like a spin-off. He's like a Jewish version of me. Okay. But he just doesn't have any punchlines yet. He's working on it. We'll him. get that. <laughs> Give him one. Shalom. <laughs> Do it. Shalom. He wants me to say shalom. Do it. No, I'm not doing that. What? Well, so you just here to eat? I'm just here to eat. You're, you're in my I never see that I'm around for negotiations. Okay. Because <laughs> he's a good negotiator. He's, but that's a little more possible. I, gotta, I had to stop in because they're filming in my neighborhood, so I figured. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Not. And you know you're going to be on TV. Not this TV. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, he's not having any infused food tonight, just to let you know. Yeah, my friend does infused food. Uh, he's got a mansion in, in Manhattan. Pizza pusher. Oh, yeah, the pizza pusher? Yeah, he makes yeah. some good stuff, man. He's a good dude. Yeah, yeah. I went there and fucking, I think I, I didn't eat infused food, but I think I accidentally ate infused food. Like a garlic knot. Like literally <laughs> just, just one, one garlic knot. How fucked up were you? I get fucked up. Like if I smoke weed, it's a problem. I get weird. <laughs> I don't, I, 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 I try to dabble just to see if I can handle it. You know? And it never works I'm out. not, I'm a lightweight. Well, that's I'm also a lightweight like drinker. I'm a lightweight so cheap weed guy. Yeah, it's, I'm just, it's not for me. I'm a head case. As is. So that makes me get really in my head. For sure. I man. don't know what it is. I mean. No, that makes a lot of sense. I guess you have to build a tolerance to it. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, nowadays it's all about, you know, like you said, jumping into it and seeing what, you know, seeing what makes you feel, like, feel, feel nice, seeing what may put you over the top. It's all about yeah. dosing responsibly now. About, right, way. dosing responsibly, yeah. And I don't, I'm not good with responsible in anything. <laughs> no, if you get him started, and then it goes crazy. Tell us a little bit more about Hesh over here. What's his name? Hesh? Hesh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really can't talk about what you do. No. You're the guy. He's the plug. He's the plug. Oh, okay. He's the plug. We just leave him as that. He's the plug. So we can't, we can't embellish on it. Well, well, we call him the show, yeah. Well, we call him the show because in college he used to be called Oatmeal. <laughs> Oatmeal. Because <laughs> he was really bland and boring. It, it carries through to this day. Right. He's a boring. That was that was my pledge name when I was in, yeah uh, in, in, in Alpha Beta Data whatever hell he was in. And they did some fucked up shit then. So when he pledged to be an alpha beta beta, he won oh. so bad to be a member that he would have did anything. So like him and 18 guys got dropped off in like a countryside somewhere naked. That's and they not true. Through. Wait, so you guys went to school together? No, no, no. He was in a sorority. Fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> and he... Yeah, and he did all the pleasure shit. Like, what do they call that when you do like the hazing? Hazing. hazing? He did all the hazing, hazing and didn't become a member. <laughs> no, <laughs> let me clarify. We all <laughs> this guy eats like a child. He ordered zucchini fries <laughs> and ravioli and chicken fingers. <laughs> and meal bowls though. Probably, probably stone. New Mr. <laughs> lamb chop. The lamb chops were sad. Oh, oh, the lamb no, chops. No, oh chops. my god. I want to know. Do you, do you cook at all? No, but I'm going to start cooking. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like if you cook... Like, everybody does my shit, so now I want to do their shit. So I have, like, a beautiful kitchen for cooking. Like, I have a big range hood, and I have, like, a commercial Oof. kitchen hood, and, like, you know what I mean? So you I'm like, you know what? Let me set a camera up. I'll make eggs. Oh. Is your wife not going to be proud of you? <laughs> I don't even know what she thinks I'm doing here. I was like, I'm just walking down the block. Are think... you going to tell her you're going to be on TV? You may go viral. Yeah, what the hell? I don't care. It went up. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody gets hit with a yarmulke. Still, I'm still working on the tagline. I don't know if that's gonna be it. Shalom. I like, I like the shalom though. No, you got shalom is nice. What's another greeting? Like, what's like a Jewish greeting? 
No, that's if you drink. What would you call him before? Hesh? Hesh? I called him Hesh before. Hesh is a great name for you, bro. So let's get deep. You brought up your family. You know, nowadays everyone thinks like, you know, success and family can't all come together. So how do you build, how do you uh, balance everything you've built, your social media, your presence in the community, you know, all over social media and a family and being a dad? It's hard. Definitely hard. It definitely affects the children. Really? Yeah, because, well, I, you have to have a very supportive partner. You know, my wife is like super supportive. So I can see that right away. As soon yeah. as I met you, you walked in with your kids, your wife. Yeah. You were at no meeting. Well, I'm a family. I'm, I'm very old-fashioned in the sense of family. You know, I was raised like, to me, it's in my head I'm doing this for them. You know, I'm trying to build something for them. It's not in vain. I'll tell you right now, a lot of people do social media for vain reasons. They want to be popular. Mm -hmm. I can say 9 out of 10 people I interact with in social media that's what they're doing. Maybe every two out of 10 people is really, are doing it to make money and monetize. I can say one thing with me is, I like to be popular, I like to be center of attention, but I knew right away that I had to monetize or I wasn't gonna do it. Yeah, yep. Like I had that crossroad. Well, are you gonna do it or you're not gonna do it? And I said to myself, all right, maybe I'll pay my car payment. Then I was like, all right, maybe I'll pay my mortgage. Then it paid my mortgage and my car payment. And then it was like, all right, yeah. maybe I can build something bigger. Maybe I can make a real brand out of this. You know what I mean? And that's that's what happened. But I would say that what I one thing and I, I I don't do is I don't um, I don't use social media for things that a lot of people would do that are tempting. Okay. Well, uh, I, I'm not on there, you know, to meet people and hang out with people I don't know and get fucked up with them or to pick up girls like I don't do that like it's my thing is like business and I have friends that be like hey you know you, you can do this you do. that's not what I do I, I I keep myself very business oriented if you message me and it's about some nonsense I won't answer you if you message me and it's about business I answer you if you message me say hey, I love your stuff I'll give it a heart and tell you thank you but I'm not like really I don't I I, I look at it as a business well, I mean, yeah. and you and you just like you said, you just came into like your own social media platform. What, two years ago now? Uh, it's almost three years. Almost now. three years. Yeah. I mean, that like you know you you know so much about it now, coming from someone who didn't even use it like yeah. when you first started. You yeah. Know, people are asking you for your for your Instagram handle, and you're like, yeah, Shit, a lot of people ask me for my advice on it. So, so I see him day to day, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he does work, but you know we've got a. <laughs> <laughs> it does work. He's doing a good job. But like when we go out, he you know he films his uh, videos during the day. It's pretty interesting to see. But like just hearing what what Mo has to say, like I I do feel like he's taking it very seriously. Like you know you just you're trying to do things that help your brand that help you know. Yeah. The awareness I understand. Like you know you, you, you like I I, I just recently uh, made partners on a, a brand I told you guys. Uh, it's called Trio, mm -hmm. and it's um it's a juice good all natural juice drink i guess you could consider it like an environment i thought he jewish for a second <laughs> no no but i'm it always goes out the right I, 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 I got some really I, I i'm blessed to have very good mentors in my life and uh i have a lot of mentors that see value in what i'm doing and i and i and, I, and some people have told me hey look you know this is what you need to do and i've listened so now i'm just like a partnering with brands and i understand Look, when you understand social media, you understand product placement. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right? So we're doing pawn a favor right now, but you're just not getting paid for it. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so what He's I'm saying... trying to get for Angelico. I'm just trying to say, so you're helping them without realizing it. So now what I'm saying is if I own Aquapana, hey, I, we're showing it through the video. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really about lining stuff up with brands. And then once you realize that large brands are paying you to do this. You're mm -hmm. like, wow, I need to have my own brand. Yeah. So I'm so my own product. So I really dove into learning that business, co-packing and, and and white labeling and everything. Yep. And now it's only been about seven months and I have two products launching. I have, a, <laughs> I have two products. One I'm not going to mention because the ink's not dry, but the Trio is locked in and that's a juice you're going to be doing. Well, Trio's out already, isn't it? Trio's been out, they're carried by Pepsi. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have some really interesting partners, and uh, it's going to be great. I can't wait. It's actually 
What I can tell you is it's one of the best mixers I've ever had. Really? Like they mix with vodka, okay. with tequila. It's delicious. So they have their typical, you know, like kiwi strawberry and all that stuff. And now they have like, a, they start doing like a pina colada and stuff. And it's delicious. Ooh. Great mix. And I always look at stuff that the mixer yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a great mixer. So I have some really uh, cool launches we're going to do with some nightclubs and nice. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. What you go to drink? I like martinis. I go right to the chase. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big drinker. I, I used to like whiskey. Like, I was like a McAllen guy. Mm -hmm. Then scotch. Scotch. During the pandemic, I started drinking a lot of tequila. Everybody's on tequila now. Everyone, yeah. Everyone and uh, martinis, I go out a lot to eat. And I just like, I'm not, like, I don't enjoy drinking. But I want the buzz a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think martinis is just like right to the chase. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's they're, like, they're pretty strong. They're strong. And, I mean, and he I doesn't get his dirty. I get mine extra dirty. You, you, you're just straight. What is it? I don't know. Vodka, I mean, right? I do feel I'd be a little drunk. I have to add this thing sooner. <laughs> uh, we got Sunday sauce. We got uh, we got uh, we a linguine with clam sauce. That's probably chicken balm or something. Real Frankie. Real Frankie. What's yeah. that? It's uh, similar to the Bill Parmigiano, but the sauce is this. Nice. Then we got uh, like a child's dish. We got the ravioli with the vodka sauce. We got a shrimp, uh, what is that? Shrimp scampi. Shrimp scampi. Shrimp scampi. Yeah, well, and then we got a skirt steak, how you doing? I want to salt my own shit. In what regard? Yeah, well, like what some kind of, kind of secret shit like that. You're already in there. You got the, uh, the TikTok crew. Nah, they don't got what it takes. They'll fold. <laughs> 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 he's been sizing them up from day one. <laughs> no, he's, the, he's like the leader. I you know. You got to see these guys. I'm not like the leader leader. No, you're the leader. We made Kuja leader because he's more popular. I'm second in command. Porky. <laughs> we're making Porky something, even though he sucks. Even <laughs> though he's not popular, he's just, he's good. Because he'll take All I know is I see Kuja, he's like sitting there. He's just like, like shaking his head. Kuja's, like, are you, Kuja's are you, the boss. Are you checking with him before you do stuff? So he's the boss. Did you have to check with him before you came here tonight? No, but he knows where I am at all times. I know where Three he times is. a day, calls this guy. He's like, <laughs> this is what I'm doing today. Like, so I, maybe you're not the boss. I don't. He not, said he was number two. Number two. I don't know. You don't listen. But then in private, he tells me he's the leader. You're like, you're in like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, uh, you're like a Maya character. You know, like you're the guy who's in Florida. You're like, you're like Hyman Roth. You know. I don't see it. Don't we know. like, we respect you, but we don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks look, like the guy from Wolf of, Wolf of Wall Street a little bit. Which one? I don't even know which yeah, one he is. I don't know oh, his name. Oh, the fat side. Jonah Hill? No! <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something? Dogs, when you fuck with a dog, it's next level hatred, bro. Yeah. I did a, a, a video of me talking bad about a dog. So, like, my friend had a dog that, like, if you wanted to go out and get dressed, it's going to attack you and put air all over you. We were going out to a club. And his dog ran up on me and fucking got his hair all over me. I was like, this fucking mutt. So if I call the ASPCA on this motherfucker, I did a video. When I tell you for weeks, I got tortured by every advocacy you could think of. You talk to a dog like that, you should die. They'll go more crazy over a person than a child. Really? Yeah. Did you, you, you took the video down? Yeah. Yeah, I had to. How often do you take a video down? I maybe took it down like six in my life. Now he's, now he's getting smart. Before he posts it, he's like, all right, well, maybe there's a brain well, I think that the level of... <laughs> The way you test the video is like you TikTok it, you know? Okay. You put it on TikTok because TikTok is going to give you instant reaction. Yeah, yeah. And you can see if it's worth keeping up or not. Gotcha. And so like if a video, I won't post, so other than like a hired gig, I won't post a video on Instagram unless it's already proven on TikTok. So I put it on TikTok and it's got, you know, a good is amount it, of views. Is it the same followers that you have? You know? no, 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 no. I mean, I'm sure, I some, I'm sure it's some of the, some yeah, of the same. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But you put it on TikTok is like a, it's like a testing ground. Interesting. So you see the reaction on TikTok, and then then you'll decide to put it on other platforms. Okay. Yeah. Because TikTok very instant. The algorithm on TikTok is very easy. TikTok's also very strict too, right? With like what they what they like like fly because we heard like I, I anything we're getting a lot of like, like little violations for dumb shit. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh, the steak is unbelievable. Honestly, this shrimp scampi is one of a kind. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Foodie is delicious. Yeah, you want to try this? 
Give him some. Let's, let's make it to the side of the table. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm taking Sponge from you. I'm, I'm taking Sponge home with me. That's going to be... I'm, I we, call Sponge. We, we call our, our boys birds, but when I use Sponge for the first time tomorrow, it's going to be a fucking... I don't use it a lot in my videos, but I'm going to use it. What's a Sponge? It's Sponge is like someone who just like sponges, like you. <laughs> like you knew there was food here. You're like, I'll be right back. Yeah, he's like, honey, I'm going to walk the dog. For you to actually get up and come here, your level of sponging is next level. You were like, you knew you were getting a free meal or not? I, I'm telling you, when you told me to do a podcast, I, had, I didn't, didn't quite know. understand why it was at this restaurant, but, you know, yeah, I envisioned maybe. something very different. I figured it was something <laughs> good. So, out of the, you know, you said you probably visited, what, 300 restaurants? Um, during the pandemic. During the pandemic. We're about two fifty. Two fifty. So. so now, I mean, now at this point, you got to be close to what nine hundred thousand restaurants you've been to. Nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred or a thousand. Oh. Um, I'm probably at like eight hundred. Do you think you can give us like a top three out of that? I don't even know, man. Other than meal posto. Yeah, other than meal. Do I can't give you a top three? No, I get asked this all the time. Yeah. I really can't. I have. So many places that I, I can tell you things that it's weird. I'm a weird person. I have no recollection of my childhood. So I'm going to give you, I'm a weird person. I remember things with feelings. So like if you upset me when I was a kid, I'll remember it. Okay. But I couldn't tell you any of my teacher's names. Really? Really? Um, I don't know. I have that type of memory. So what I'll tell you is I've had feelings from restaurants that I can't forget. Okay. Hospitality or... Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I love, like, I'm, I'm going to tell you this much. I will say this much. And I really mean this. My favorite place to eat is Poppy Steaks in Miami. Okay. I love Poppy. I love Grubbin. They're just great guys. I love the company. I love the atmosphere. I love the hospitality. I love the food. I just love everything about Miami. I'm a big yeah, yeah, guy. Me too. In New York. What was that place we went to? I don't remember. Lavo? Lavo, right. I love the city. I love, uh, I do visit a lot of the Tao restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, that place was great. That place was great. Lavo was great. And uh, I love the Tao group too. I like hospitality group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like restaurants. Drink. A lot of people don't. A lot of people just like, um, you know, like real, like, I do like old fashioned Italian spots. Like, there's a place, my friend owns a place called Cafe Spaghetti in Brooklyn that I love. Cafe Spaghetti? Yeah. I like it's, that. It's excellent. Hot notch Italian food. Um, everybody's going to ask about pizza, right? Because everybody cares about pizza. I don't, but everybody else does in America mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, I love Lucali's. I think Lucali's is, is hot notch. For a regular slice place, I love Luigi's at Park Slope. I also, for Sicilian Slice, I love Da Vinci's on 18th Avenue. Um, these are places I'm just coming off my head. I like that you remember like the slices from the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get things. And like I said, sandwich-wise, I do love Anthony Panini Shop in Williamsburg uh, on Graham Avenue. The, everything they make is excellent. Okay. Uh, I love the Fonties for like a morning thing. Potato and eggs. I love potato and eggs. Peppers and eggs, I love. Um, Leone's is great, being a pork store in uh, Tiger Heights. Um, this guy's going to go all day. I, 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 I've been to so many places, yeah, so that's why I I'm trying <laughs> to go off my head. But my favorite places to go, and I do love Carbone. I don't want to leave Carbone out. I, Carbone's a, a go-to for me. Uh, but I'm close with the people there. Mm -hmm. They always treat me like family. I always get a reservation. I sit in a nice cushy spot. I like I like the cheers mentality. I like to go to places where everybody knows my name. Yeah, no, I, I feel that's my right mentality. Man. So <clears throat> I'm a big atmosphere guy. I think that's why I love Miami because it's just really active. I like that type of scene, you know, where it's like drinks and good food and good music and good people. And everybody's in a good mood. Yeah, everyone's there for the same. Everyone's there for the same thing. Because you could go to a place that's really popular, and the mood is bad. And I'm going to give you a scenario. This is why I'm going to give respect to like a poppy steaks and Grubman and with David Aaron do at Poppy Steak. So you go to a place that's really hard to get into, right? And you can 
get leave there feeling it was bougie. And the first thing you say to yourself is, it's not as good as everybody says it is. Because you're upset by you waited too long for food. Mm -hmm. It took you six months to get reservations. There, when you go to like a towel spot like the, uh, Noah runs or like a poppy, right? Because it's hospitality based, you're never leaving with that. You're never going to leave and say, oh, I waited too long, whatever. It's go you're going to feel good about your experience. Right. Yep. And you're going to enjoy the food. But, and I, I, I mean, I've heard people say, everybody says something to say, right? About other oh, places, maybe it's too expensive, whatever it is. But what I'll tell you is that's, to me, it's the overall experience. It's the hospitality, it's the way, I agree. the way you were treated, the vibe, mm -hmm. and the food. The food is the food. I've been to probably 500 Italian restaurants in three years. The menu is 85% the same in every one of them. Yep. Usually there's a trendsetter, like maybe you have a carbone with a spicy rigatoni, and then 55 restaurants do spicy rigatoni. Mm -hmm. They make a pompadel, a pompadel, pompadel is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's always the same dish, because right. there's a trendsetter and then there's a follower, right? And that's, that's what it is. But what I'll say is the places that, that I like are like that. Deli wise, getting a shop in Brooklyn, stuff like that. You're gonna go there, you're gonna see characters, you're gonna interact with the workers, you're gonna laugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, so I don't know, I think I named my favorite place. Yeah, no, I mean, nowadays it's all about the experience, too. Yeah. I do love Rayos, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I do love Rayos, I don't leave them out. Rayos is difficult to get in. I love the atmosphere. And a lot of people will throw shade at them because they, they can't get in. Ain't that good? I personally do like it. I think it's excellent. Well, people love exclusive shit. Well, yeah. no, but a lot of, you have people that love exclusive shit, and then you have people that love to say exclusive shit ain't good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're never yeah. going back there. Mm -hmm. That's the people that go there twice. They're going to go, it's not that good. Yeah. The people yeah. like that can go there at will. You know yeah, what I mean? They, they, so they it, you get people like that. Some people think it's cool to like, say a place sucks. I don't. I don't ever talk about places that suck. I never say a place is yeah, bad. I, I've said this before too. Like, I only leave good reviews. If you're bad, I'm not I leaving. I just leave it out. Yeah, That's exactly. it. I think my thing is I have this like DL thing I do if I have an espresso in my video. That means I enjoyed it. And people who follow me know. And that's my thing. So, like, if I have the espresso, I enjoyed it. If I don't have the espresso, I'm looking at it. Okay. That's on a time restaurant. I like that. No, so, I that's like, like a little DL thing I do, and people that follow me know. So, that's well, it. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, I know we're not, we're not talking bad about any restaurants, but would you eat in Olive Garden? I mean, I think I might have eaten there when I was a little kid once. I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't be I my I feel like that's too. the Italian question, man. I get that all the time. Like, yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm not big with it. I don't know why. Like, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, you'll eat anything. <coughs> I go to eat with you at lunch. You eat horrible. I'm on a diet right now. You eat, like, <laughs> the worst shit. Bro, I, my first Passover with my Jewish friend. Look, I, Jewish wasn't, I didn't know what to do with the gefilte fish. I, I couldn't do it. The gefilte fish? <laughs> I didn't even know it was a real thing. What is it? Yeah, what's up? I have no idea. I never that's, from, that's from what? Just fucking win, baby. <laughs> You're listening to The Oven Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. And we're back. <laughs> we're back in action. We're drinking martinis like they're going out of style. We got espresso so you know it was good. We got this big thing over here. I don't know what it is. We got a giant <laughs> cheesecake. And this guy next to me don't try to stop stealing my dunga. There's about to be major problem. <laughs> Italian cheesecake tiramisu and Napoleon. You said it. <laughs> it's tiramisu. What do you want to do? Oh, my so, yeah. so for the Jewish guy, what is Italian cheesecake? Because I never It's heard of uncircumcised. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that. Is it regular cheesecake? It's uncircumcised cheesecake. Yeah, I think that's never kind of disgusting. Thought. <laughs> Do not call my friends, please. Disgusting. It'll be major problem. Oh, you hear what he said? Simbuca or Frangelico? Simbuca. Latte or cappuccino? Cappuccino. Cappuccino. Is it sauce or is it gravy? I say both. I don't care about that Italian shit. It depends. If there's meat in it, you could call it a gravy and I'm fine with it. Okay. That was like a very serious answer. Well, it is because the Italians take apart everything I do. I thought you I wanted it to be very clear. I, I'm just saying that, like, to me... Because they typically would say sons, so I want to say gravy. <laughs> Italians <laughs> like to break my chops, so I'm going at them. 
best Rocky movie. I know you're a big Sylvester Stallone fan. Rocky one, I'll that's cry. it. Start that's it. Good. <laughs> I cry. I just watched Good Night to Cry. So I cry every Rocky movie. Is that is that Sylvester's best movie? Rocky's the best. Take it to his own. <laughs> <laughs> I like when he says, "Hey, you get the license plate number of what? The truck that run over your face, <laughs> buddy." Oh man. Oh, um. Uh, you, do you watch The Sopranos? Never. Oh, see, I love it. I no love it. I watched. I watched like three episodes. My father loved The Sopranos, so we, we were gonna do like a Soprano night thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it like three times before he kicked me out, and I was in the streets. I never really sat and watched it. <laughs> my dad actually, my, he always. I wanted to watch. I watched a lot of movies. You know, like a lot of shows. He hates it, man. He's like not it. a big fan. He's well, old school Italian. He's too, old school Italian. I, I'm gonna tell you what it was for me. It wasn't that. Um, oh, they make Italians look bad. I was like. I didn't realize people from Jersey were like that. So in my head, I was like, fuck out of here, Jersey. You know, I was more of like a New York versus Jersey thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I was a little kid when it came out. I would love to watch it now. I mean, everybody says it's great. I gotta like binge watch it, yep. but I haven't. Yeah. One, one song you need to tell, you need to know life or death, all the lyrics right now. What song you go with? Oh, I don't know. I like 21 Savage. You like 21 Savage? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was not expecting that. I like 21 Savage. I like it. It says Chuck E. Cheese. Rat. We get rodents. Rat. <laughs> I like it. Um, I don't know. My top song. I, uh, I like, I like, it depends what mood I'm in. Okay. I like uh, 80s music. I love Sinatra. Love I like listening to Sinatra. Okay. What's the fuck? But I do like, I like, you can't talk when I'm talking. But I'm intrigued by But the mic, she's got to do the audio. You have to talk. It's my first time. I, don't I know. know. He's new. He's I'm new. I'm teaching you. Can when? I go for that real quick? I'll oh, shut up. <laughs> You're only doing questions oh with me. Yeah. yeah, we want some of your answers, too, if you want to jump in. This is going to be weird. <laughs> we don't want it. Right? <laughs> right, go, 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 go. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> you got to get your following up. Right now, you hold my weight. I got 12 people. Oh. You got Best place to get a tracksuit. I'm actually surprised you're not in a tracksuit. I know it was a little hot before, but... Because uh, I, was, I was in the city. Um, I'm I always in a tracksuit. Well, I get... I, I now... I don't go shop. There used to be a place on Myrtle Avenue that was like old school. Knickerbocker has tracksuits. But like Knickerbocker and like Myrtle or like Bushwick Ridgewood, shut up while I'm answering. Oh, I, t- I tasted the puff thing. It's fucking delicious. All right, all right. That's it's the gonna Napoleon. Be it's going to be great for comedy. Yeah, that's Napoleon cake. He's got Napoleon. some shirt on. Is that silk? No. Feels like it though. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, Sergio. I was going to be in a tracksuit today. I'm a big tracksuit. I like tracksuits too. So, there's um, in Bushwick Ridgewood. Did you see my text about the tracksuit? <laughs> this guy don't shut up. <laughs> You're really only here for like, because we felt bad. <laughs> You're not supposed to really talk. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right? No one even knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy your puff over there. It's you, you're wearing shirt. the wire outside your shirt like a real mama look. I mean, this guy's like an agent. Look at him. Where were you tonight in a murder? <laughs> what murder? <laughs> what murder? <laughs> nah, this is a question that we ask everybody that comes on, or we started to at least. I'll wait for that door. Pants oh. Pantry. Pants Pantry is where we used to go, but I think it's closed down. What's it called? Pants Pantry? Pants Pantry. Oh, Pants Pantry. Oh, for the, for the tracksuit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I right, one historical figure. Dead or alive, that you can sit down to dinner with and ask any question they got to answer. Gang is fucking gone. Yeah? Why? Because he's, I don't know, he's a just not. <laughs> I like to just fucking see what he got to say. You know? Okay. I like that. Didn't he fuck like what thousands of women? I don't know what he did, but I know he was serious. Dude. Who, 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 no, who, I'll cut him out. I definitely want to sit with like a Roman guy, like Julius Caesar or something, like Marcus Aurelius. Okay. I, I was not. Yeah, I just wanted to like talk with my hands with him, you know? <laughs> Was that a thing back then? I don't know, but I would make it a thing. <laughs> Marcus Aurelius. No, I just no, looked at Marcus Aurelius. I'm like, did you just step on my foot? Because I'll tell you right now, it's about to be Major Brahms. <laughs> Alexander the Great. You're just naming me like Aristotle. Aristotle was a serious guy. He's just naming shit. He doesn't even know his Well, those are Greeks now. Or I'd like to go to Aristotle. All over the I'd like to walk up to Aristotle like this and go, what hand is the marble in? <laughs> Who else we got? <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that means, but I love it. <laughs> I mean, like, let's see how smart Oh, my God. <laughs> what else? I'm, my last one, man. Are we actually running for mayor? Ooh. You know something? I think it's a smart idea. I mean, I don't think I'll win, but I think that it'd be, like, pretty good publicity. 
I'd be funny. I'd actually have voters. I think. Bro, you would have a serious. I think you'd have. The a problem is, is they're gonna pull up a lot of shit in my past. Yeah. You gotta be ready for that shit. Ready, ready. Right. No, help yourself. <laughs> That's your water bottle. <laughs> I mean, look what happened. I feel like Trump started as a joke, and he ended up president. You could fucking yeah. be here. No, but you know what? I gotta say, he's at work. Very, very smart. This guy is no joke. Knows what he's doing. Thank you. How many drinks did you have? Because you're doing that, you're at that like compliment stage <laughs> where you feel the need to like give me my 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 flowers. I'll take it, but I know it's a drunk thing. He's trying to take you home. Would would you, you allow list. me to write an HVAC scope sheet? Never. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I respect what you've done. It's good. What else we got? That's it on my end, man. I think it's time for that oven question. Yes. Before we do that, I just want to say thanks again for joining us on another episode. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Most importantly, subscribe, like. Push that out. button before I give you a heading two time. Okay, thanks. <laughs> right, let's break out the oven. Yeah, yeah, just make on. a fucking mess. Uh, oh, shit. This is yeah, weird, right? Well, I mean, you know. It could get a little weird. It, it's, we'll see. It's really all just like, right shit that comes out of we'll his put it right here. We'll put it right here. It's fucking... I actually, I didn't believe you. You had such a small oven. Yeah, so it's just really ridiculous questions out of a ridiculously small oven. Some are spicy. Some are fucking dumb as fuck. You know, you never know what's going to come out. But we'll grab one. one. Would you date a, girl's, a girl who lives with her ex-husband? No shot. No fucking chance. That's weird. I was, I was working with some guy, and... I know some, I can tell you a story. I know a guy who, who lived with a girl who had a sheet up with his ex. Like, had a sheet up? His ex girl, they lived together when they were together. And then the girl moved in her ex, and he couldn't move out because he couldn't afford to. So they put a curtain up, and he has to go to sleep, listen to the girl moan. Oh, oh no, that's a fucking nightmare. Oh, no, yeah, way. this one, this yeah, one. Someone very close to me. <laughs> can't say who it is. <laughs> No way. This one says, would you use the same towel as Cougine after he took a shower? <laughs> Did it really say that? Yes. <laughs> no, it does yes. <laughs> What does it say? <laughs> no, it was just a random one. Would you select Hesh as your manager after he didn't shut the fuck up on the podcast? We would Never. <laughs> oh. Hesh, you're a good kid. Try it. Try Thank you, boys. Thank you Thank for having you. me. Thank you. Let me run up in this Let me just give camera. a shout out. Do Nobody you. move. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt. <laughs> You're listening to the Oven Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We want to thank the crew over at Mio Post of America for absolutely stacking the table with some of our favorite Italian food on the island. Whenever you're in the mood for Italian, this is the spot you should head to. Make sure you check out our YouTube page, click the subscribe button, and come back next time because there's always an open seat for you at the oven.